Hi everybody, it's Sweetie Sue's. I'm back with another thrift haul. Um, this is my Halloween slash month of September. Um, Carlos wants to say hello. Say hello, Carlos. Oh, he wants to bite on my finger too. Anyways, um, we have been traveling a lot of this month and we're not done. And if you know us well, you know that whenever we travel, we always hit up any vintage thrift shops or our vintage stores or thrift shops in the area where we're at. So we went to Portland, we went to San Francisco, um, I recently visited my parents in Wairika. So we hit all the thrift stores while we were there and I'm here to show you what I found. Sorry about the squeaky noise, it's the only way I can keep this little boy happy. So um, I'm going to start with all the Halloween decorations first and it, actually not all of it. Uh, I found a lot of ceramic stuff that's not really special, it was just cheap. Um, but I'll start with the vintage stuff. So I found a blow mold. Um, it's the cat with the pumpkin. There's a hole in the back to where you uh, put the uh, light fixture on the bottom. Um, it doesn't have a company name on the bottom, but just from doing some research, I found out that this is... Um, oh, I forget what brand it was. But... I don't know. It's pretty cool. It was only 50 cents, so it was a, a steal of a deal. Um, the next Halloween item I got was this cool uh, light fixture. It's Black Cat on the Moon, and it's got lights in the back that light it up. Um, little plug-in. Um, I don't think this is vintage. I just thought it was really a neat design, um, and that was only, I think, $2 for that. And then the last Halloween item is this huge blow mold that I found in Portland. And this one is the General Foam Plastics brand from Norfolk, Virginia. Um, it's missing a light bulb, but that's I can replace that pretty easily. Um, but it was a steal of a deal, again. Really cool. Okay, so the next non-clothing item I found was this dish towel and it's 1959. It's got all the calendar years on it. And then it had these really cool um, details on it. And I would use this for a dish rag or maybe to put over some dough that's rising. Um, but I just love these designs. And then jewelry, I actually didn't find any bake light this month. I did trade my bake light rods for some bake light. This was actually one of the trades I bought. Got this from uh, my friend Robin. Um, and so the first piece of jewelry I, I found was this Russian brooch, hand painted. Growing up, um, I'm a military brat, so I spent a lot of time moving around as a kid. Um, and my dad worked in the Air Force and worked for a team where he would travel to Russia a lot. So he'd come back with Russian stacking dolls and Russian jewelry. So I actually had a couple pieces like this when I was younger. I'm not sure what I did with them. I, I know I've tracked down one brooch, but when I see these in the shops, I make sure I grab them. And then the other brooch is totally just an 80s little plastic glitter part. Um, it kind of reminded me of uh, the jewelry that um, I love. Um, Match Accessories make some amazing brooches and it just kind of reminded me just a little bit. Theirs are much better than this piece. Um, next kind of odd item I got was this uh, framed piece of needlepoint that says pussies are for ponies and it's got a little redhead girl riding a crocodile. <laughs> so um, I had a laugh when I discovered it, and for $2.99, I had to get it. And I've got a little collection of um, needlepoint in my bathroom, so I thought this would be a great little addition. Um, so the next set of things, I'm actually not showing you all of them, but I managed to find, I think about eight um, Ladies Home Journal magazines from the 50s. Um, and the funny thing is when I went to go buy them, the lady at the counter said it was me and one other gal that bought them all. 
And I guess the lady that came in before me bought like 20 or something. And um, she made the comment that she looked like me, like kind of wears her hair vintage. So if you're out there, you're watching this, contact me. Let's be friends. <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad she left some behind for me. So they've been so fun to flip through and see pictures and see if I can find a good ad to show. I mean, just like, well, actually, that's not the best one. Let me find some pretty dresses. Oh, this one's pretty great. An advertisement for a refrigerator. Isn't that just fabulous? Anyways, so I got eight of those. And then yesterday we were in Wairika visiting my parents, and I managed to find a TWA travel bag from the 80s. Um, it's in great condition. Um, the little plastic thingies on the bottom were still intact. Usually those are cracked or they fall off. So just thought it was a great bag and um, for I think it was like $2. So so next up is all the clothes and that's all I have left for this vlog. So I've got this really nice scalloped black um, slip that I found. Um, it's scalloped on the bottom. And the label in this one, I think it's, I don't know, I need to do a little research, but it's Leona Woolworth is the name on it. And then it's, it's actually sewed over another label that if I wanted to read it, I'd have to break the label on the top. So I won't do that, but just, you know, whenever I see vintage slips, I always grab them. Um, next up, I got this really cute sweater. Um, I think this was probably meant for a teenager because it's pretty small, but it would it would fit in somebody that's like a like a small or extra small. But it's in great condition. All the buttons were intact. All the um, beading is in great condition. Well, there's a little bit of looseness there, but other than that, it's I mean, survived as long as it has. The brand on the label is Blair Moore original and it's an acry acrylic um sweater but i'll probably at be adding this to my shop um sadly this doesn't fit me uh, next up i found an emma dom dress this is one of two emma dom dresses i found this month this one is a polyester black cocktail dress from the 60s it's um maxi so it's super long it's got these Really cool um, sequence design on the front, and then it goes all the way around to the back. Um, that will be added to the shop. Next up, I got this, I think it's 80s, just 50s. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a, a waitress dress, so it could have been somebody's uniform, but it's a really pretty candy, candy cane pink stripe and then full skirt at the bottom and that's unfortunately doesn't fit me so that's going to my shop um next up is this really great um kind of crocheted like lace style dress um it is in great condition i couldn't find anything wrong with it um, the label is for Ann Colby. Um, I think this might be from the late 40s. Here's the label. Early early 50s. But, I mean, this thing is pretty beautiful. You'd have to wear a slip under it because it's see-through and there's no lining, but that's easy to do. Um, and this will be added to the shop. Next up, I found this uh, swimsuit wrap. Oh, I just discovered the label. Barefoot Trader. I think this is from the 70s, just based on the label. There's the label. Barefoot Trader. Um, this is too small for me. But I'm thinking I might save this and maybe use this material to make a lamp, a tiki lamp for my tiki room. Because it's a really great bar cloth, uh, like taffa material. Really cool pattern. So this one I'm keeping for the time being um, with plans to possibly repurpose it later. Um, 
Next up are the things I found in Portland. Those things in the beginning, I think I found here locally. Um, and then this I found in Portland. I was visiting my dear friend Angie, who just moved to Portland. Welcome, Angie. Um, and this is just a kind of polyester, uh, late 60s, maybe early 70s dress. Um, it does not breathe at all. I tried it on in 100 degree weather and immediately regretted it. Uh, the dress does fit me, but I would probably reserve this to be worn uh, maybe in the early spring months when it's not super hot outside. This fits me. I'm keeping it. Um, my next item, I think I keep going back and forth on what I'm going to wear to Tiki Day, which, by the way, is Sunday, October 1st. Uh, it is coming up. But I found this really great cotton um, tiki dress. The uh, brand is Liberty House. There's the label. It's got these cute little bows on the back, and it's a waterfall back. And again, it's cotton, which means if I wore this to Disneyland on a hot day, it's going to breathe, so I'm not going to be super hot. But I just love that bright pink and red pattern on it. So that fits. I'm keeping that. Next up, I got this bowling shirt. I'm pretty sure this is a newer shirt, maybe from the 90s, maybe even 80s. Um, the brand is Cruising USA bowling shirts and I just love that pink and the black um, and then the back has the the league name sister let's see sister strikers <laughs> I just thought that was so cool and I'm keeping that for me next up is our trip to San Francisco so we went to San Francisco for the Gatsby picnic. That was a ton of fun. Thank you to the Art Deco Society that puts that on. We love to attend every year. This year was really hot. Um, it was, I think it got into the hundreds. It was, it was pretty, um, it was fun, but it was also really hot. Just, I guess that just sums it up. Uh, but we got there early a couple days early and we spent first couple of days in Point Richmond with a, a family member of mine and we went thrifting with her and then we also went into the city to Haight-Ashbury and hit up Wasteland Vintage, Decades Vintage, Relic Vintage, and then Amoeba Records and we ended up at Smuggler's Cove and then Pig and Idol. It was quite the day. But this was uh, the dress that I ended up buying at, um, oh, I forgot to button it up. I bought this dress at Wasteland. And I got to say, when I was younger, uh, me and a friend of mine used to drive into San Francisco, unbeknownst to our parents. <laughs> and we would go shopping specifically, specifically at the store Wasteland. It was one of our favorite vintage shops to go to. And, Maybe it's just because that was nearly 20 years ago and, you know, 50s and 60s clothes are becoming less easier to come by. But I noticed that most of the clothes that they had in the shop were like 80s, 90s, 2000s. Like, wasn't a ton of what I consider true vintage in the store, but it was still fun to go back and visit my old stomping grounds. But I found this dress. I thought it had a very nice um, 40s inspired look to it. I love the floral print. It's a maxi dress. It's really nice and long. Um, the brand on this is Classics by Carol Anderson. So if you're interested in looking up, maybe buying uh, reproduction styles from the 90s that are a little cheaper, that's always a great idea for your budget. So this was my, my item that I purchased at Wasteland. Um, I forgot to grab my dress from Relic, so I'll just add that to my next uh, vlog. But um, this was a dress that I picked up at a thrift store. This is the old Hattie. Um, it's not vintage, but I just love this print. It is obviously a Frank McIntosh inspired print. Um, if you're not familiar with Frank McIntosh, he designed menus for the Matson line um, cruise ships. 
uh, my grandparents were on, I think it was uh, the cruise ship in the 50s. Or no, it was 40s. I think they went in the 40s. And um, it was their first time going back to Hawaii to visit family that still lived there. So I actually own two of the original menus that belong to my family members that they saved from that vacation. And it's this artist, it's Frank McIntosh. So when I saw the print, I just fell in love with it. I mean, I just love this print. It's so great. I might even wear this to Disneyland. It's not vintage, but um, I just love Frank and Macintosh that much. Um, next top I got, I got this um, sequins beaded top. I have a couple of these. I have one in cream. I have one in a pink. I have one in a black. And this red one just spoke to me. I saw it hanging on the rack. I knew exactly what it was right away. Um, these were made in Hong Kong. And um, here's the label. Um, and luckily it fits me. I just love this color. How fun is that? That will probably be saved for a, a, Viva, a Viva outfit or Vegas outfit. Okay, so the next item is not vintage. It's a vintage reproduction. It's the brand Tatiana, uh, formerly known as Betty Page. Here's the label. And it's this beautiful aqua blue um, dress. I love the pockets in the front. This doesn't fit me, sadly, so I'm going to resell it. Um, but I love, I love this dress. I'm so sad it didn't fit. I even thought about just repurposing the lower part and turning it into a skirt, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that'll be happy to own that dress because they don't make those anymore. Um, next up are the items that I found yesterday visiting my parents in Wairika. I found this like 50s, maybe late 50s, early 60s, kind of wool, or not wool, it's like linen um, dress. I just love the buttons on it and kind of the little like fluffy material on the sides, totally a winter dress. Um, that doesn't fit, so that will be in the shop. In fact, most of this doesn't fit, sadly. Um, this was another vintage dress I found. Really pretty late 50s, early 60s dress. Um, I just love that print. Um, it's kind of a, a satin polyester blend. And it's a full skirt that's going in the shop. And then this item kind of killed me. Um, this does not fit me. There's no way this fits me. This is totally an extra small top. But these I've seen pieced together with the hand-painted Mexican velvet skirts. And I went all over that shop to see if I could find that skirt. And it was nowhere to be seen. So somebody must have picked it up. Or somebody donated it to another store, sadly. But this is a top that would normally be paired with one of those skirts and too small so that's going to my shop um here is the other emma dom dress and it's this beautiful red um nylon um dress with kind of a vinyl um, undergarment. It's here's the label. It's again an Emma Dom. And it's got a couple issues. There's a couple cigarette burns on it um, on the front, and then I think just a couple moth holes on the back. And then the strap on this side broke, so I'll probably fix that. But this is likely going to be going on the Wounded Bird um, website on Facebook. Okay, so the last two items I'm totally keeping. Um, I found this quilted overcoat or, um, um, I can't think of what it's called, loungewear, um, sleepwear, I don't know. But every year at Viva Las Vegas, there's a meetup that happens for breakfast and we're not going to Viva 
this coming year, but we've decided we're going the next year. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, that'd be perfect. So I got this. And then when I got home, I stuck my hand in the pocket and I found the original tag in the pocket. Um, so satin air, this nylon polyester cotton. And then also there was a, a spare button in the pocket too. How neat. So I wonder if whoever owned this never wore it. <laughs> Um, cause it's completely spotless. There's no problems with it. Everything, all the other buttons are intact. Um, it fits me perfectly. So that will be worn at Viva. Um, and then this is probably my favorite find from the whole weekend. I found a novelty print wrap skirt and it's a Greek theme, like Greece. It's got different spots there. There's more spots, and then it's got different. There's a design there, and there's a bunch of gods, Greek gods there. Um, and this fits, just barely fits, but it fits. Um, so I will be keeping this for myself. But anyway, so that's it. That's everything I got, um, I guess, for the month of September. And uh, thank you for watching. Please give me a, a thumbs up if you liked my video. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.